Replacing your brake pads is one of the easiest jobs to perform on your car. In general, you should inspect your brake pads about every 25,000 miles and replace them if the material lining of the pad is worn down enough to trigger the pad replacement sensor. In reality, most people don't inspect their pads very often and usually wait till they see the little brake warning lamp appear on the dashboard. It's a wise idea to replace the pads and inspect your discs as soon as you see that warning lamp go on. Using a screwdriver, ply out the retaining spring on the front of the caliper. And as always, you should be wearing eye protection. This photo shows the upper protective cap being pried out of the cover for the caliper guide bolts, green arrows. There are two caps, one for the upper and one for the lower bolt. With the caps removed, you can loosen the caliper guide bolts using a 7mm hex key socket. You don't need to remove them completely from the tubes, just enough to free the caliper from the bracket. This picture shows the location of the lower mounting bolt. This picture shows the location of the upper caliper guide bolt. At this point, you should also remove the 5mm hex bolt holding the brake wear sensor connector to the caliper. Once released, pull the connector for the brake wear sensor apart. With the caliper guide bolts and retaining spring removed, you should be able to lift the caliper off its bracket. If it's stuck on there, you can use a screwdriver to carefully pry the caliper up and off. With the caliper removed, simply pry the brake pad out of the piston inside the caliper. Once removed, check the dust seals around the piston for crack or damage, also, clean the inside of the caliper with some alcohol or compressed air. It's a good idea to suspend the brake caliper out of the way with some zip ties or rope when you're not working with it. Never support it with just the brake line. This can damage the line. This picture shows the two 19mm bolts that secure the caliper bracket to the steering knuckle. This bracket must be removed before the disc can come off. These bolts are torqued down very tight, so you may need to use a breaker bar to loosen them up. Once the bolts are removed, slip the bracket off and set it aside. The brake disc is secured to the wheel hub with a countersunk 5mm hex bolt. Once removed, the brake disc should simply pull off. Sometimes the disc can stick to the wheel hub. If it's stuck on, use a hammer on the backside and gently tap it off. If it's really stuck on there, you may need to spray the disc surface with penetrating oil and let it soak overnight. This is what you should see once the brake disc has been removed from the wheel hub. If there is corrosion on the bearing flange to rotor mating surface, it must be removed at this time or you will have brake rotor runout issues. I suggest you sand it off and coat the surface with some anti-seize compound. Shown here is the new brake disc fitted to the wheel hub. It's a good idea to put a small dab of anti-seize compound on the threads of the new disc, the retaining bolts before installing and lining it up. Then line up the new disc with the mounting hole on the hub. You will likely have to hold the disc in place until the bolts start threading in. Before you can install the new pads in the front, you will need to push the piston back into the caliper. In this case, a large C-clamp works well. Make sure to seat the face of the clamp on the inside of the piston and also solidly on the rear of the caliper. You can also leave the old pad on when pushing the piston back to help. You're also going to be pushing fluid back up into the reservoir, so check it and make sure it doesn't overflow. Make sure the piston retracts evenly into the bore. If you encounter any resistance, stop and check that you aren't caulking the piston in the bore. Install the caliper mounting bracket to the steering knuckle and torque the mounting bolts to 115 newton meters or 84.8 foot-pounds. Fit the outer brake pad on the caliper frame as shown here. Before you can fit the inner brake pad inside the caliper, You'll want to either fit a new brake wear sensor or transfer the old sensor to the new brake pad. When the pads wear down enough to break through the plastic sensor, 
The circuit is completed, giving the brake light on the dash a ground. Use a pair of needle nose pliers and pull the old sensor out if you plan to reuse it. With a new sensor, simply push it into the hole on the pad as seen here. Once the caliper is mounted back over the bracket, plug the sensor back into the harness. Remove the ties holding the caliper up to the frame of the car and fit the inner brake pad to the inside of the caliper piston. It is held in place by a spring clip and that may take a little effort to seat. Route the wiring for the brake pad sensor through the top of the caliper. Mount the caliper back over the new pad and disc. Line up the caliper guide bolts and torque the caliper guide bolts back down to the bracket at between 18 and 22 foot-pounds or 25 to 30 newton meters. Refit the protective caps back over the guide bolts and lastly refit the spring clip on the front of the caliper. When finished with both sides, press on the brake pedal repeatedly to make sure the pads and the pistons seat properly. Also check the brake fluid reservoir, especially if you have removed some fluid when pushing the pistons back in. Make sure you top that up as necessary. Brake pads typically take between 100 and 200 miles to completely break in. It's typical for braking performance to suffer slightly as the pads begin their wear in period. Make sure that you avoid any heavy braking or emergency maneuvers during this period. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.